Felix Mendelssohn, born in Germany in the early 19th century, was an organist, composer, and pianist of the early Romantic period. He was born in 1809 and only lived to 1847, dying quite young for an upperclassman of that era. Though nominally Jewish, he never had any formal religious upbringing and eventually decided to become a Lutheran later in his adult life, adding Jacob and Solomon to his ever-increasing collection of names. Though his father was supportive of this, his grandfather Moses was decidedly not, and Mendelssohn's conversion created great friction in the family, though he and his sisters were still very close, and remained close. Like Mozart before him, Mendelssohn was quickly recognized as a child prodigy and began taking piano lessons at the age of six, eventually starting counterpoint and composition with Karl Friedrich Zelter when the family moved to Berlin. Zelter, a rather conservative musician with conservative tastes, was a great admirer of Johann Sebastian Bach and encouraged young Mendelssohn to study Bach's music for his counterpoint. Needless to say, Mendelssohn fell deeply in love with Bach and modeled many of his fugues and chorales on that Baroque tradition. Mendelssohn inherited that conservative taste in music from his teacher, and his study of Baroque music, and therefore didn't venture as far out as his contemporaries such as Liszt and Wagner. He preferred to stay within the bounds of known musical theories, and did it to great effect. He was a prolific composer, appearing in concert when he was nine and writing his first music at the age of twelve, and composing a full-scale symphony at the age of fifteen, opus eleven in C minor. His work, unfortunately, wasn't fully appreciated at the time of his writing, and he remained obscure until his conducting of the St. Matthew Passion by Bach, which was the first performance of that since Bach's death in 1750. Though he was known in Germany, this brilliant conducting catapulted him into the international spotlight and sparked a revival of Bach's work, who until then had been underappreciated as the father of modern music. Mendelssohn, in his con tradition of being a conservative musician, would probably have been better suited to the Baroque era than the Romantic era of music. But, even if he wasn't a composer at all, he would still deserve great accolades for reviving interest in the music of Bach, who until then had only been known as a virtuoso organist and not the incredible genius that he really was. Aside from his music, Mendelssohn is perhaps best known for revolutionizing the role of the conductor. Until his time, the conductor had been seen as nothing more than a living metronome, a timekeeper whose only function was to keep the musicians in check. Mendelssohn changed all that, turning the post of a conductor of an orchestra into a role to be sought after and only attained by the greatest in the field. He was, perhaps, the first virtuoso conductor, though we have no way about knowing about conductors before him, since they generally weren't remembered. Mendelssohn eventually married Cécile Charlotte Sophie Jean Renard and had five children, one of which died in childhood of the measles. Their descendants are still extant today through their oldest son and daughter. Cécile died only six years after Mendelssohn. By all accounts, he was a faithful and loving husband and father, and was never distant or isolated because of his work. It seems, though, that the stars that burn brightest are the ones that burn briefest. Mendelssohn died at the age of 38, already in poor health, and, like Mozart, his work probably wasn't helping him very much. Though his death was mourned across Europe, at least he gave a dramatic exit. As he lay dying, surrounded by his friends and family, a brass marching band passed by the house. He sat bolt upright in his bed and conducted the band wildly, and then seconds later promptly collapsed and died on the spot. He is buried in the First Holy Trinity Church Graveyard in Berlin. Brief lift of his most famous works, the Scottish Symphony, the Overture to a Midsummer Night's Dream, the Italian Symphony, L'Obgesson, the Hochzeit di Camacho, his only opera, Rondo Brillante, the Violin Concerto in E Minor, Opus 64, and Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and many others, all of which you should check out. He is wonderful as a composer and as piano virtuoso, and, unlike some of his contemporaries that were pushing boundaries, very pre present to listen to. You probably already know some of his most famous works just by listening to them forever. Hark the Herald Angels Sings come readily to mind. We'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsors. The Nathan Cohen Foundation, the Sons of Prussia, Free Hats for Fat People, the Committee to Remove the Ba from Sis Boom Ba, the Task Force for Better Pancakes, Nathan, the Fox, Cohen, the Nook for Needy Nuns, the Brotherhood of Real Creeps, William Waller, the Cult of the Supreme Being of Decca, Nathan and the Cohens, and St. Anthony's Hospital for the Recently Dead. Thank you, and God bless America.